morning. We're just going to give folks a moment to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, when you are coming in from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing before the board. Just one moment more to let folks in. Okay. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, August 24th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board and today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. As a reminder, please mute yourself unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. Following questions, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. We'll begin with the first item on this morning's agenda, calling item number one, Madras Dosa Company, Inc., doing business as Madras Dosa Company, located at 55 Boston Wharf Road. Holder of a common vitular license has petitioned to amend their hours of operation from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. to Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. and Friday to Saturday, 11 a.m. to 3 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, Babu Koganti. Great, thank you, Mr. Koganti. Um, if you could please present your proposal to the board. Yeah, uh, so this is Babu Koganti. I'm uh, owner for Madras Dosa Company, located in 55 Boston Wharf Road. We have an exclusive dosa place with uh, dosa. Dosa is like an Indian crate. Um, and we have two char items. It's a fast casual place um, located on uh, Boston Wharf Road, right next to Chipotle and Axetuna Grove. Um, we were operating until 9 p.m. every day, and we get a lot of uh, I mean we're getting a lot of requests from the customers and a lot of I mean we get a lot of tourists who are asking us to extend our hours, so we decided to extend our hours till 2 a.m. on the weekdays and 3 a.m. on the weekends so that we could serve the community and all the all the tourists up there. Uh, because a lot of food places in and around seafood are closed by 10, 10, 30 p.m. every day. So we want to open at late night. So whoever wants to come in, they can come in or whoever wants to get the food delivered to DoorDash Uber. So we want to offer them late night food. Great. Um, thank you, Chairman Madras. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, yes. <clears throat> um, is it just takeout? Yeah. Yes. And we have few seats. Um, we have four, fourteen seats in it, but most of it is takeout. Okay. So, um, can you can you expand upon your request for a three a.m. closing on Friday and Saturday? Do any other places in that area have a three a.m. closing? No, they don't. We are the only one who are staying that late. I mean, there are a lot of clubs and uh, bars which are open, but the food places, we, we would be the only one in Seaport to open that late. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit about your community process? Yeah, we went down, um, we had an Alberto's meeting with the community. So we explained them. So they were convinced, yes, uh, because a lot, of food, a lot of people, after 10.30 PM, even the Shake Shack was at 10.30, a lot of people are looking for food in that area who are visitor, be it visitors or be it people who come down to clubs. So we thought uh, we could offer them food. Um, even myself, when I go down to that area late night, I wouldn't have anything to eat if I'm hungry. So we, we came up and we said, okay, why don't we offer? And people who don't even know what dosa is, they're walking in and they're loving the concept. Oh, the dosa is just like a burrito or a crepe. So everybody is getting used to our food and it is vegan, gluten-free. It's easy to take out. They can, and also the packaging we're using, we're using only biodegradable throughout our restaurant. We don't have anything plastic. We don't use anything uh, which is not disposable. Okay, and do you have any other, do you operate any other 
um, restaurants similar? Yes. Yes. Uh, I have another restaurant called Wanga uh, in Water Street in Boston. Right. And uh, I have another one in Uber called Godavari. We operate another one in Norwood, Massachusetts for 1947. So how long have you been in the business? More than eight years for now. Okay. And we just signed another one for the same concept in Howard Square. And what time is that closing? 10 p.m. We want to, we want to take it late night. I'm sorry, what time? p.m. We want to open late night food there as well. I, can't, I couldn't hear him. Did you say 10 p.m.? 3 a.m. 3 a.m. 3 a.m. You got yes. approved for? Okay. Yes. Um, okay. We've had some opposition to the 3 a.m. closing, so um, we'll see if there's anyone else here. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I'll wait for comments. Thank you. Nothing yet. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abutters meeting on July 20th, 2022, about the proposed change of hours. No abutters attended, but the head of a local civic association was there. The proponent answered all questions. No concerns about the license change have been expressed to this office. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. <clears throat> the councilor would like to go on record in opposition to this proposal. They, we have heard concerns from neighbors that, that the extension of hours will exacerbate existing quality of life issues with a 3 a.m. closing being simply too late in the interior of both public safety and quality of life for residents and neighbors. We add that the proponent consider an earlier closing hour on Friday and Saturday that are more in line with other businesses in the area. We also provided a letter in opposition to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a raised hand from Tom Reddy. Uh, Mr. Reddy, I'll ask you to unmute. Danny uh, may yep. Thanks, Dan. Danny. Um, uh, uh, Chair, Chairwoman Joyce, members of the board, Tom Reddy from FPNA. Uh, we attended the abutters meeting on the 20th that ONS, um, Anna from ONS referred uh, to. Uh, we, there were, we haven't received any opposition uh, to the hours. Uh, the concerns raised at the time were um, um, trash disposal noise mitigation, if there was going to be any for takeout, and then um, pick up and drop off of um, that would typically occur with this kind of a, a restaurant, right, with uh, Uber Eats, that kind of thing. Uh, we've been working with the, uh, the, the owner of the, of the property to get uh, two uh, parking spots in front of those establishments that were refer referenced by Bob who converted to um, pick up and drop off from metered parking. Uh, we've got a reassurance from BTD that that'll happen. Um, so at this point, um, uh, we recognize there may be some concerns with the 3 a.m. closing, and uh, we'd be fine if Baba wants to pull that in a little earlier, but uh, we don't, we're not opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Oh, I see Mary Karski from Council Clarity's office. I will ask you to unmute as well. Hi. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman and everybody on the board. Um, yes, we would like to stand with local council and would like to see that not not stay open that late. I think it's, a, um, you know, for the neighborhood, it could cause issues. So we stand with local council. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advice. I just have another, one more question, Danny, for the applicant. So right now you're open till 9 p.m., is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so you're looking for 2 a.m. Sunday through Thursday and 3 a.m. Friday and Saturday? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. And how long have you been in business here? A year is more than a year. Did you say more than a year? Yes. Okay. All right, no other questions for me. Great, any other questions from uh, Commissioner Carter or Commissioner Saxon? Uh, none, thank you. Great, and any further testimony on this item? Great, then the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number two, uh, in-house cafe company doing business as in-house cafe located at 132 Chestnut Hill Ave in Brighton has applied for a common vigilant license to be exercised on the above one room on the first floor with kitchen and storage and rear manager Ahmed Dairy hours of operation 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. 
who is present on behalf of the applicant. I believe you're on mute. Hang on just one second. I'm going to ask you to unmute. There we go. Hi, my name is Ahmad Deri. I'm the owner of In-House Cafe at 132 Chestnut Hill Avenue in Brighton, Mass. Uh, well, I'm already just like, you know, almost going to open at the end of this month, if you allow me. And uh, I'm just here for like to uh, get the permanent uh, permit. Um, thank you. Um... Mr. Derry, are there any seats inside your cafe? Yes. How many seats? 38. 38 seats, okay. And you propose to open from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m., seven days a week? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. Thank you. No questions from me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. Uh, some back information on the community process. Um, In-house cafe would be located in a uh, new senior building uh, that went through an extensive BPA community process. During that community process, it was always mentioned that uh, on the ground floor, there would be a use such as this. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't conform with the zoning, so um, the applicant went before the Brighton Alston Improvement Association many months ago, received their full support. Um, our office doesn't have any concerns at this time and are unaware of any neighborhood concerns. There's other similar businesses on this uh, avenue as well. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number three, Shamrock Boston LLC, doing business as Shamrock Pub, located at 501 East 8th Street in South Boston. Holder of a common vitular seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has a petition to change the manager of the licensed business from Angus O'Leary to John Lydon, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Uh, good morning, Danny. John Lydon here. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there anything you would like to present to the board? Uh, just a brief summation, Danny. Uh, this is as straightforward as it sounds. Just seeking to amend the manager of record for the Shamrock Pub in South Boston from Angus O'Leary to myself. We've been open since January 14th. I've been working hand in hand uh, with Angus during the, you know, during the first six months of that time. Uh, it's gone well. Enjoyed it. It's uh, it, it, nothing but up and up. And uh, Moving forward, uh, Angus has decided to go a different direction and I'll be hopefully taking over as manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leiden. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. And where do you live? Milton. Okay. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Well, beyond the past, I think uh, eight months of running the Shamrock Pub on a daily basis, I grew up uh, in a family that owned several bars in the city of Boston, uh, <clears throat> going back to the 1980s. Uh, the Castle Bar in Brighton, the, um, the Rover in Fields Corner, and the Shamrock Pub in the 1970s uh, was my grandfather's. Okay. Um, and are, so are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay. Um, and in the last, how many months have you been running the Shamrock Pub? Uh, since January 14th. So just a tad over eight months, I think. Okay. And have there, have you noticed as manager um, any issues um, with, um, you know, staffing or any issues in general um, as manager following the rules and regulations? Um, uh, in regards to the rules and regulations, no, it is difficult to locate staff these days. Um, I end up filling in a lot of shifts, um, but that's improved over the last few weeks. Um, but on the whole, we've had a, a great time. I, I run this, uh, you know, with the help of my wife and I really enjoy it. It's been successful. Um, and I, I guess the answer to your question is no. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
We're just digging into some of these manager record questions as they come before us um, sure. in light of some of the difficulties that uh, licensees have had. Sure. Um, all right, thank you. I have no questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? Nothing further for me, thank you. Nothing additional, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Following item number four, the Institute of Contemporary Art, Inc., located at 25 Harbor Shore Drive, holder of a restricted general on-premise all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Pierre Pratt to Emily Pacini, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Thank you, Secretary Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Gazda on behalf of the licensee. With me this morning is Emily Pacini, who is the new proposed manager of record for the Institute of Contemporary Art. Um, relatively straightforward, just a change of manager of record, no other operational changes proposed. She is on the call if you have any questions, but she is a U.S. citizen, a Massachusetts resident, has significant experience in the industry, and is familiar with the rules and regulations regarding the service of alcohol. Okay, um, I don't see Emily. If um, she's here. Yeah. Oh, there you are, Emily. Thank you. Um, and where do you live, Emily? Um, I am a, a resident of um, Revere. Okay. Um, I've been working for the company for four years now. Okay. Um, and what is your experience in the food and beverage industry? Probably at this point, about 20 years of experience between hotels um, and hospitality. Um, I've worked for many different companies in the city. I've been a resident um, between the North End and Revere for the last 16 years. Okay, and tell me about the space at the ICA that has the alcohol um, license. Is it for private events only? Um, um, so it's work? for private events as well as the cafe. There's a small cafe that we manage um, Wednesday through Sunday. Um, that closes uh, depending on the um, ICA's um, event schedule. Okay, and with the private events, have you had any issues uh, with staffing or crowd control? Um, um, no, we really haven't. I mean, as um, the other gentleman mentioned, it's hard to get staff these days, but um, we've been working with, you know, private companies to um, staff all of our events and uh, everybody is TIP certified and, and we do follow all of the, um, the rules and regulations. Okay. How long have you worked at the ICA? I know I've seen Four years. So I technically work for the catered affair, Okay. Um, but we manage the space at the ICA. Okay. and manage the liquor license. Okay, uh, thank you for that clarification. Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing further, thank you. Nothing for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify in this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this matter under advisement, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, Select Hospitality LLC, located at 314 Newbury Street, holder of a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business from Grand Tour to Little Whale Oyster Bar. Uh, attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. Signed on with us this morning is chef owner Michael Serpa. Um, the application before you this morning is um, just for a DBA change from what it's now known as Grand Tour to Little Whale Oyster Bar. Uh, there'll be the same ownership, no operational changes. The only changes to the concept and the menu, which will now offer and highlight classic New England style seafood dishes. Uh, there will be minimal disruption to operations. They only plan to be closed uh, about a week starting on September 4th to um, change over the concept and plan to be reopened by September 12th. Thank you, Attorney Scanlon. Uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Serper. I have no questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon. I do not, thank you. Nothing for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Calling items six and seven at Diamond Rock Boston Broad Street Tenant LLC, doing business as Hilton Boston Downtown Faneuil Hall, located at 89 Broad Street. And Diamond Rock Boston Tenant LLC, doing business as Weston Boston Waterfront, located at 425 Summer Street. Holder of an in-holder all, -alcohol all alcoholic beverages license as petition for a change in officers, directors of the corporation. Who is present on behalf of the licensees? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Taylor Yell. I'm with Blue Bonnet Consulting, and I'm assisting in filing the officer change uh, for both of these entities. Uh, there are no changes in ownership interest or any uh, information regarding the property, except adding Jeffrey Donnelly um, on the docket to be um, a new officer. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Carwin and Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not, thank you. I do not have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on these matters? Uh, items number six is four, seven, um, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on these matters? Seeing none, the board will take these under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number eight, Patina Boss LLC, doing business as Banners Kitchen and Tap and Hub Hall featuring Momo San Robin, Ramen by Morimoto, located at 80 to 82 Causeway Street, holder of a common vigiler seven day all, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers directors. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Chairwoman Joyce, Commissioners, Secretary Green, Tom Miller, uh, on behalf of the licensee. Um, as we were here a couple weeks ago for uh, the other patina change of ownership, um, this is very similar. The, the change is only at the officer level. Uh, the former president, uh, Chris Harder, has left and has been replaced by Donna uh, Polanco. There are no other changes to the corporate structure. There's no change in the day-to-day -day operation of the licensee. We want to thank you for hearing this application. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, thank you, Attorney Miller. I don't have any questions. Commissioners, do you? I do not. Thank you. I don't either. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number nine, P.F. Chang's China Bistro, Inc., doing business as P.F. Chang's China Bistro, located at 8 Park Plaza, holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Good morning, Elizabeth Pisano, on behalf of the applicant. Um, the licensee is seeking to remove John Antioco and place him with Damola Adam Olaken uh, from P.F. Chang's Bistro, China Bistro Inc. Um, and also remove and replace him with the upper tier entities Walk Holdings, PFC Intermediate and PFC Parent Corp. Um, and we are also seeking to add Jessica Jusaz as treasurer of PF Chang's China Bistro Inc. Um, all upper tier entities and ownership interests will remain the same and there are no operational changes at the restaurant. Thank you, Attorney Pisano. I have no questions. Commissioner Kerr and Commissioner Saxon. I do not. Thank you. None for me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling items 10, 11, and 12. Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as AC Hotel by Marriott South End, located at 225 Albany Street in Roxbury. Item 11, Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as Residence Inn by Marriott South End Boston, located at 2001 Washington Street in Roxbury. And item 12, Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as AC Hotel by Marriott Cleveland Circle, located at 395 Chestnut Hill Ave, has petitioned for a change in officers directors of the corporation. And for item number 12, uh, 395 Chestnut Hill Ave has also petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Kevin J. Matheson to Christopher James Martin, uh, Attorney John Aida. Attorney Aida. Thank you, Attorney Green. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, John Aida on behalf of the 
licensees, which is Coleman Management Inc. Um, all three of these matters are, are identical in the first request, which is a change of officers. Um, simply adding um, a position, uh, David Rebich is being appointed as chief financial officer. Um, so there is no other changes um, in that uh, on that front. There's no ownership changes and no changes to the day-to-day -day operations. On the final matter, which is the Cleveland Circle Hotel, um, Christopher Martin joins us. Um, uh, Chris has been a prior manager of record in Cambridge. Uh, before going over to Cambridge, he was actually at this location in Cleveland Circle. Um, and he's uh, kind of circling back around after about four years or so, uh, starting with um, the company. Chris is a United States citizen. He's a mass resident, um, and he is familiar with the rules and regulations of the board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as it pertains to sale and service of alcohol. Uh, if you have any questions for me or Chris, I'm more than happy to answer. Thanks, Attorney Aida. Is Chris here? I don't see him on my, oh, there he is, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Um, can you describe for the board what your experience is in this industry? I've worked in the hotel and lodging industry and food and beverage for over 10 years now, um, specifically as a most recent with colon management coming on to five years now. I uh, was originally in charge of hiring and maintaining this property, AC Cleveland Circle 395 Chestnut Hill, when it first opened, and um, have since then held general manager roles and a few of our select other properties, also using food and beverage as their outlets. And now as officially coming back full circle to this original property that started with Colin. Okay, thank you. And thanks for joining us, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Uh, nothing further, thank you. I do not have any questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on these matters beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on these matters, number 10, 11, or 12? Seeing none, the board will take these under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 13, Silver Nickel LLC, doing business as Union Park Pizza, located at 1403 Washington Street. Holder of a common victualler seven day wine and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the location of the licensed business from 1403 to 1405 Washington Street to 244 Newbury Street. Premises consist of 1,140 square feet in one room on ground level with main dining, seating, kitchen, and storage in rear, 150 square foot seasonal outdoor patio, April to December on private property, closing hour 10 p.m., general closing hour 11 p.m. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee, Silver Nickel LLC. Signed on with us this morning is Joe Silva, who is the owner of Union Park Pizza in the South End. Uh, just by way of background, Joe has been in the industry for um, 20 plus years as a general manager of various restaurants and part owner of another prior to opening Union Park Pizza in November of 2018. Um, at that site, they have about 16 seats and uh, 30 seats last year for temporary outdoor dining. They just didn't do it this year um, with the pending move. Uh, due to the building they're in, um, that site is being developed. So they've been working on obtaining a new space since they learned of that news and found um, this particular space on Newberry Street near Fairfield Street um, and are excited to move over and become new um, members of Back Bay. Um, in the South End, they've um, quickly become the go-to neighborhood spot for brick oven pizza, priding themselves on making their sauce and dough in-house daily with organic ingredients, as well as imported ingredients from Italy. Um, a little while after opening in 2018, and as the board is aware, uh, the restaurant successfully obtained a beer and wine license, and since that time has been an exemplary licensee at this uh, location in the South End. Um, the space that they're moving to on Newberry Street is currently operating um, as a sandwich restaurant. It has 18 seats inside and approximately 30 seats outside, which Union Park Pizza would keep the same. As indicated in the um, legal description, the hours of days of operation proposed are daily from 11 to uh, 11 p.m. with the patio closing at 10 p.m. And as far as public need is concerned, this is a classic neighborhood spot. 
which is certainly welcome in Back Bay, keeping the charm of local retail offerings, in particular on Newberry Street. They certainly have a proven track record of not only quickly rising to a valued neighborhood dining spot, but also recognized as being a great neighbor in the South End and will uh, continue and, and are looking forward to doing so in Back Bay. And while of course, there's other pizza offerings in the area. This is a unique style, as I mentioned, a brick oven pizza with other menu options as well, including uh, salads, appetizers, and specialty pizzas. We did meet with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay in July, who did not oppose the change of location, and we are scheduled to have an abutters meeting this evening. So we would respectfully request that uh, ONS report back to the board prior to tomorrow's vote once we complete that meeting at 7 p.m. tonight. If all goes well, anticipated opening is as soon as possible and hopefully by October at this location. Uh, happy to answer any questions or address any concerns the board might have. Well, thank you. Uh, I have no questions. Um, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? I do not. Thank you. No questions from me. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, at this time, we'll defer to the board. Uh, we don't envision any concerns. As Kristen mentioned, we're having a voters meeting tonight. Uh, we'll be closing up the loop on the community process and we'll report back uh, when that's been completed. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 14, High Street TRS LLC, doing business as High Street Place, located at 100 High Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from in one large room on ground floor of 100 High Street and 160 Federal Street, with 24 designated vendor spaces, dedicated restrooms, and seating areas for 200 seats throughout entire food hall area of 18,265 square feet, with seasonal April to November patio and private property. Two, in one large room on ground floor of 100 High Street and 160 Federal Street with 24 designated vendor spaces, dedicated restrooms, seating areas, 200 seats throughout entire food hall area of 18,265 square feet with annual outdoor patio on private property with seating for 84 persons, 1,641 square feet and an 11 p.m. patio closing hour. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Thank you again, Secretary Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Brian Gazda on behalf of the licensee. With me on the call this morning is Lauren Johnson, who is the Marketplace Manager. This is an application for an alteration of premise for the existing High Street Place food hall in downtown. Um, as the board is aware, this is a large food hall that operates with several vendors vis-a-vis -vis management agreements indoors and has an existing seasonal outdoor patio at the premise. When it was originally licensed, as I mentioned, it was stipulated as being a seasonal patio between the months of April and November. And this application simply seeks to amend that from those stipulated months to being an annual patio um, to provide the ability to seat patrons outside, outside of those off-peak months, if you will, um, of course, weather permitting. Other than that, there's no changes proposed. The licensee has discussed this application with the Residents Association as well as the bid, and we've received no opposition. Um, but we're, of course, happy to answer any questions you all might have. Thank you, Attorney Gazda, and thank you, Lauren, for joining us. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon. Not at this time. Thank you. No questions from me. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office defers judgment to the board. Um, our office is unaware of any concerns regarding this proposal at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rene. Oh, sorry. sorry. Good morning, Madam Commissioner, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The Councilor would like to go on recording support. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 15, Bunker Hill Restaurant LLC, doing business as Monument Diner, located at 231 Bunker Hill Street in Charlestown. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to 10 City Square LLC, 
located at 10 City Square in Charlestown. Premises located on the first floor and basement, approximately 8,583 square feet, first floor consisting of 6,493 square feet, with seating for 152 patrons, including bar area seating for 25 patrons, dining area for 93 patrons, and private dining room for 34 patrons. Kitchen and prep areas on first floor, basement, 2,090 square feet for storage. Main entrance and exit located on City Square, emergency exits located at rear. Seasonal April to November patio seating located on public property with seating for 20 patrons. 10 p.m. patio closing hour, general closing hour of 1 a.m. Aaron Allenbach, manager. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Executive Secretary Adam Braylor um, with Principal Beltai on behalf of the applicant. With me to this morning is uh, Eric Allenbach and John Sweeney. Uh, as the board may be aware, this matter and matter 16 and 17 are somewhat related. Um, for this matter, the request is to transfer for the CV seven day all alcohol beverages license from 231 Bunker Hill Street to 10 City Square for operation of a full service restaurant. Um, by way of background, Legal Seafoods previously operated at 10 uh, City Square with an all alcohol beverage license. Upon its closure, that license was sold and transferred out of Charlestown. So we're seeking to transfer our existing license, which is currently located at 231 Bunker Hill Street, to this location to, to reactivate the space. Um, we propose a full service restaurant at a 1, 1 a.m. closing indoor time and a 10 uh, p.m. closing on the patio on the public property. The outdoor patio uh, was utilized by the prior operator as part of a temporary outdoor dining program. And we're now applying um, to the Public Improvement Commission to formalize the use of that space. We understand that um, should the transfer be approved, no license um, can be issued for the use of, of the outdoor patio until we've received approval from, from PEC. Uh, regarding the public need, um, this is a previously licensed location in mixed use in residential part of Charlestown. The fact that the space has operated as a restaurant for years, coupled with the growing neighborhood and community support, there's a clear, we believe that there's a clear public need for the license at this location. The transfer will not result in the increased number of liquor licenses in Charlestown, nor will it result in an increase in the intensity of the license type. We held a public, um, uh, a butters meeting hosted by the mayor's office and neighborhood services, where we discussed the proposal and answered questions from the butters and, and other stakeholders. Um, there was significant support for our proposed re reactivation uh, of this currently vacant space. Regarding the character and fitness of the applicant, Eric and his partners are seasoned, well-regarded operators with multiple successful restaurants throughout the city. Eric is, is the proposed manager of record and is existing manager of record approved by this board on other licenses. Therefore, we respectfully request the board to approve this petition for the transfer of the license to this location and look forward to providing an exciting amenity um, to the residents and vis visitors of Charlestown. We're here to answer any questions that the board, uh, board, board may have. Thank you, Attorney Braylard. Um, is Mr. Allenbach here? Yes, I'm here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, I just want to acknowledge that you are an approved manager of record by this board, but as your attorney said, you are the manager of record of multiple restaurants in the city of Boston. Um, can you describe for me how you and your partner are going to do the, manage the day-to-day -day operations at these various locations? And if you don't mind just sharing with us again for the public record what those restaurants are and where they're located. Okay. Um... In, I'm, I'm, I think I'm manager of record in South Boston, the Capo. And um, I think the only other one is 224 Boston Street. But our restaurants, as you know, are in, um, there's five located in South Boston, one in Dorchester, and um, Monument in Charlestown. Um, and this, um, this location at 10 City Square, I'll be the manager of record. When we open a new business, I spend the first six months to a year in there to make sure the, 
the launches, right? And I think I think I get what you're saying, Nick. I think we'll we will be changing manager of record when we have the manager that that will ultimately run with the operations. Okay, so how do you, you know, the, the board is, um, we're seeing um, come before us other applicants as well that manage several restaurants throughout the city that aren't necessarily on the same block. So I'm trying to wrap my head around what your staffing is, that there's a manager on site all the time, how you can be manager of record in Dorchester and in Charlestown and in South Boston. And this is just a question to inform us. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong answer, but I'm trying to get, get some color around this. Um, I think administratively, um, we can clean that up. We have director of operations on the, on the, on, on West Broadway. We have okay. general managers in each store. We have assistant general managers in each store. Okay. That's exactly what I was looking for. And Mr. Sweeney will be working at the Charlestown location? Yes. Okay. You'll be the hands-on manager for the first six months to one year? Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not, thank you. Nothing further, further. thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes. yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. As you heard from the applicant's uh, team, uh, there was a community meeting hosted by the Office of Neighborhood Services. They've done extensive community outreach. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other individuals, uh, beginning with elected officials or their representatives, who would like to testify? Good morning, Elaine Donovan from Council of Coletta's office and the council would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good Thank morning, you. Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Emily Polston. I'm here on behalf of Councillor Louis Jean and the council would like to go on record in support. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jack Stelly from Council Murphy's office. The council would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Hi, Madam Chairman and members of the board, Council of Flaherty would also like to go on record in support. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number 16, 429 Broadway LLC, doing business as certified meatball company located at 429 West Broadway in South Boston. Holder of a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Bunker Hill Restaurant LLC. Doing business as Waverly, located at 231 Bunker Hill Street in Charlestown. Premises located on first floor and basement, approximately 3,300 square feet. First floor consists of 1,650 square feet with seating for 65 patrons. Kitchen storage and prep areas on first floor. Basement consists of additional prep area, office space, and storage. Main entrance exit located on Bunker Hill Street. Emergency exit located at rear, midnight closing hour. Jonathan Sweeney, manager, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Executive Secretary, again, Adam Braylor, Principal Ty, on behalf of the applicant. With me is Eric Gollenbach and uh, John Sweeney. This is a request to transport, transfer the wine, malt, and cordial liquor uh, license currently located at 429. West Broadway, South Boston, 2, 231 Bunker Hill Street. The transfer is obviously dependent upon the approval of the previous uh, item number uh, uh, 15 matter. Um, the board may recall that uh, this is the home of the former Grasshopper Cafe. We're not proposing any operational changes to what was previously presented to and approved by the board at this location with the exception of this transfer uh, with the, this transfer will effectively decrease the intensity of the use from an all alcohol beverages license to a wine malt and cordial license. The transfer will not result in an increase in the number of liquor licenses in the neighborhood. We believe that this space will be better served as a wine malt and cordial license. Just as the board found the public need for an all alcohol license at this location, we believe that there is a public need for them wine malt and cordial license here. Um, we held a, a all butters uh, meeting hosted by the mayor's office, neighborhood services, 
uh, and received significant support with no opposition. The previous, as previously noted, uh, Eric and his partners are well-regarded, successful res uh, re restaurant operators and owners in the city. Uh, John Sweeney is the proposed manager of record. John is a resident of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, is a US citizen, has significant experience in the industry, and is familiar with the rules of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and services of alcohol. We're here to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Chairman Joyce, I believe you're on, you're on mute right now. Thank you. Um, just one question for Mr. Sweeney. What is your experience in the food and beverage industry? Um, I spent the last uh, 21, 22 years involved in um, management of restaurants. I graduated from Johnson & Wales in the year 2000 and have been managing restaurants mostly in the city ever since. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon. Nothing further, thank you. Nothing for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer judgment from, to the board. As you heard from the applicant's team, um, an abutters meeting was conducted by our office. Um, there's been a lot of anticipation from the neighborhood for this site to come online. Um, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any uh, other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Elaine Donovan, Councilor Coletta's office. The council would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Good morning, Emily Polston from Councilor Louis Jean's office. The council would like to go on record in support. Morning, Jack Studley, Councilor Murphy's office. The council would like to go on record in support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Madam Chairman and Board, I would like to go on record for Council Flaherty in support, please. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter who have not yet done so? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 17, Boston Athletic Club Inc. doing business as Boston Athletic Club located at 653 Summer Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to 429 Broadway LLC located at 429 West Broadway in South Boston. Premise consists of 2,400 square feet on ground floor in one room with a bar, dining area seating for 44, kitchen, two restrooms and storage, closing hour 1 a.m. Nicholas Peter Dixon, manager, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Uh, good morning, Secretary Green, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Joe Hanley from McDermott Quilty Miller. I represent uh, 429 uh, Broadway LLC. The um, proponent applicant um, here with me is Eric Allenbeck who again is the uh, uh, part owner of the LLC and the current licensee. Uh, also partnering with Michael Conlin. Uh, also with me is Nick Dixon, who is the manager of record. This is the last link in the chain of the two prior uh, cases that are related. Um, to speak to this application, um, the existing site for 29 West Broadway uh, was approved for the transfer of the current beer and wine and cordials license uh, to be exercised there by Eric and Mike um, at uh, the premises. The transfer is merely to, the case before you is merely to swap out uh, the beer and wine license, which you just heard to transfer to Eric's operation in Charlestown. And the team has located an all alcohol license in South Boston, uh, which has been exercised at the Boston Athletic Club on Summer Street uh, for uh, decades. Obviously that business uh, has been impacted by the pandemic, uh, but also uh, doesn't need a full liquor license as an amenity to fitness. Um, and so this represents an opportunity for the team to enhance the culinary operations of what you approved on January 26. And what that was, was to change uh, from the what was formerly the Meatball Company restaurant 
and uh, they had been approved with the finding of public need for uh, the prior operation. Uh, and you approved the transfer of that in January 26. Um, one change that you will see uh, is, and I think it's noted, Madam Chair, to what you would um, uh, question before, is Nick Dixon is the manager and not Eric. Um, this team, again, for the record, has extensive experience in the restaurant industry, very good operations. But what's important about that is it's local. Um, they have the abutting Lincoln restaurant and Capo on West Broadway, as well as Loco across the street. And Mr. Conlon is the owner operator of the stockyard in Brighton. All are very well run. Nick Dixon is uh, not only is he a mass resident, a US citizen, he's a South Boston resident uh, with his young family. So very local approach. And uh, he has worked for uh, Eric and Michael for the Broadway Restaurant Company for over 15 years as culinary director. And so this is an opportunity for him uh, to uh, be part of this new operation, which was presented to you in January 26, the concept being a uh, diner, bistro, um, 2,500 square feet. 1 a.m. closing hour and a capacity of 72. None of that is changing by this application. Uh, we have had, and I'll just note, Madam Chair, when I can, in conclusion, we have had discussions uh, with the neighborhood about the opportunity to expand and add a dining room and a bakery um, next door. And, uh, but that is not before the board. We would obviously be returning uh, to uh, the community to discuss that. We have had extensive community outreach. We started in June meeting with the Cityside Neighborhood Association. We had an ONS uh, Butters meeting uh, later in June on the 23rd. And then in July, we met with the other community group, uh, the St. Vincent Lower End Neighborhood Association. Uh, this team is very uh, well versed with uh, how to operate in South Boston, in addition to in accordance with uh, the rules and regulations and this opportunity would merely allow them to enhance uh, the concept that you approved back in uh, January of 26 and then potentially we uh, would return to the community and to this board to talk about adding a dining room later. Thank you Chairman Joyce do you have any questions? I just want to make sure the description's right it says Seating for 44 and you said it's yeah that's correct so uh, i'm just reading off the license that you approved in January it's, oh, okay. the seating is 42 the occupancy is 72. Um, and the floor plan that we submitted would be the very same for purposes of this application, the concept is the same um, South Boston is losing a couple breakfast places, as well as a bakery, and uh, we think we can fill a void there. Uh, we're not looking to change that floor plan as part of this application. So there's really no structural change. Okay. Obviously, the public need is met and the character and fitness of this operator is exceptional. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks for joining us, Mr. Dixon. I have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not. Thank you. Sorry, nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, it's um, I, just, I don't see Mr. Dixon with, uh, is, he, is he with us? He's under yep. John. Oh, under John, great, okay. Yep. <laughs> great. Uh, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. We held an abutters meeting on June 23rd, 2022 about the transfer of a full liquor license to this location. Around 25 people attended the meeting and there were many questions about crowds, noise, and concern about the number of full liquor license this, this area already has. We have three letters in opposition to this location getting a full liquor license. Our office would like to defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board. Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Hi, 
Madam Chair and Board, this is Mary Karski with um, Council of Flaherty's office, and we'd like to uh, go on record with the um, local council in support. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Okay. Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Calling item number 18, Gordon's Fine Wine and Liquors of Boston, Inc. Located at 37 Temple Place, holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Massachusetts Fine Wines and Spirits, LLC, at the same location. Jennifer Mason, manager, closing hour 11 p.m., attorney Trish Farnsworth. Attorney Farnsworth. Good morning. Uh, good morning, chair, members of the board, and attorney Green. Uh, Trish Farnsworth with Lawson and Whiteson in Boston here this morning on behalf of the applicant, Massachusetts Fine Wine and Spirits. Uh, this is a transfer of an existing license on Temple Place held by Gordon's Liquors. Uh, Mass Fine Wines and Spirits received the um, opportunity to purchase this. And uh, with me is uh, the general counsel, Bob Schaefer, and the proposed manager, Jennifer Mason. So we're here to just transfer ownership. Uh, Mass Fine Wines and Spirits is licensed in Massachusetts already, has a number of locations. They do business under the name Total Wine. This is a smaller location and it will be operated under the business of uh, the Crossing, C-R-O-S-S-I-N-G, Wine and Spirits. And if it hasn't been already, a, a page one, um, amended page one will be submitted to, uh, to the board to indicate that name. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Mason is uh, experienced uh, in retail, certainly more than 10 years. She's been with Total Wine since 2018, currently working in the Everett location, TIP certified, um, and mass resident U.S. citizen and such. So if you have any questions, uh, mm -hmm. Attorney Schaefer, Jennifer, and myself are here to respond. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. Um, Ms. Mason, I realize you are um, working at the Everett location of Total Wines, but uh, for the record, I'm gonna ask you, are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Curry, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. No questions from me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Sorry, Danny. Um, Go good morning. Anna Calderon from Council President Fling's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 19, 842 Beacon Street Liquors LLC, doing business as Shippies Warehouse Wine and Spirits, located at 842 Beacon Street. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to Shippies Inc., doing business as Beacon Street Liquors at the same location. Janessa Patel, manager, closing hour 11 p.m. And lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company. Attorney John Radian. Attorney Meridian. Uh, good morning, Attorney John Meridian, Democus Law Offices on behalf of the applicant, uh, Shippy Zink. Um, I'm here on behalf of you uh, requesting uh, approval of the transfer of the license at 842 Beacon Street from 842 Beacon Street Liquors LLC. Uh, Janessa Patel is with me on the call. I saw her um, briefly. Yeah. Um, she undergirded it by the store. Um, it's simply a transfer and ownership. There'll be no changes to the uh, store layout or anything like that. Um, like I said, approval of the transfer of the license, uh, approval of Janessa as manager of record, and a pledge of the license and inventory to Rockland Trust Company as the loan is being used to finance the acquisition and, and startup of the, of the purchase here. Uh, Janessa's experience in alcohol sales. Um, she's TIP certified. She's a U.S. citizen and mass resident. Um, she's familiar with the rules of the ABCC, uh, the city of Boston, the state of Massachusetts. Um, like I said, there'll be no changes, uh, 11 p.m. closing hour, and uh, their current conditions on the license as exist, no nips, no kegs, no walk-in cooler, and no lottery. Those will stay with the, um, 
um, license was transferred. Thank you, Attorney. Um, Ms. Patel, what is your experience in this industry? So I have a liquor experience seven to eight years in um, audits and wine spirit in Lynn location. And I own and manage the location. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Calling item number 20, Jonathan B. Harker doing business as Italian Express Pizzeria located at 336 Sumner Street in East Boston, holder of a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages with liqueurs license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Chow Lin Hot Pot Boston LLC doing business as Chow Lin Hot Pot at 336 Summer Street. Premise to be licensed as a one floor restaurant with one entrance and one exit. Total square footage of the premises is 4,424 square feet. Seating capacity and occupancy number are to be determined. Closing hour, weekdays 10 p.m., weekends 11 p.m. Shen Yang Manager, Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Attorney Green, Andrew Upton from Upton, Connell and Devlin for the applicant. Uh, just a, one correction is that the license is being transferred to 392 to 398 Cambridge Street. It's being transferred from uh, 336 Summer Street. Um, the character and fitness of this applicant is strong. I have with me Zun Yang, the proposed manager of record, and Marcus Wong, the uh, lead investor and operator. Uh, the manager has been working full time at Kowloon Hot Pot in Chicago uh, for the last three years. He's very familiar with the operation of the store and the sale and service of alcohol and the supervision of the sale and service of alcohol. Uh, he is a US citizen. He's gonna be a mass resident uh, living in the condos above the proposed restaurant. And he is familiar with the rules and regulations of the board. Um, the character and fitness of this applicant is strong. This has been a very successful Chongqing style hot pot in Chicago. Uh, it's beautifully designed. It's in the downtown loop area. It's extremely popular. Uh, there are smaller, more regional, regionally focused hot pot places in Chinatown and elsewhere in Boston, but a larger scale Chongqing size place like this has the opportunity to uh, feature not only the traditional lamb, beef, and pork dishes that you put into the hot pot, but also more exciting and exotic fare like the ox tongue, the chicken liver kebabs, and the tripe. Uh, so they're excited to bring this style of dining uh, that they have been so successful with in Chicago to Boston. Uh, we believe there's a public need for a license at this location. This is a new development. Uh, it's a mixed use building. It's gone through extensive community process uh, with city agencies and with the community. Um, that being said, we did hold a uh, mayor's office a butters meeting on March 10th. And we had a meeting with the ACA uh, on March 16th, both of which uh, generated some support and no opposition. Uh, so this building is designed for a restaurant. Uh, we estimate the seats are about 127, just to be clear, that's pending ISD. But per the plans, we can fit about 127 people. Uh, we're looking for beer, wine, and cordials, no hard liquor. And we're closing at 10 on the weekdays, 11 at night. And with that, I'm glad to answer any questions. Um, Attorney Upton um, or Mr. Yang, when will you be moving to Massachusetts? Sounds like you said he was going to be a Massachusetts resident. Yeah, so uh, we have already got our like a building permit and the construction uh, will start this week. Uh, we hope to finish the whole construction within six months. So okay. my manager, Xun Yang, is considering moving to Boston early next year, like January or February. Depends on the process yeah. of the whole project. Okay. Right, right. Um, he's, not, he's, he's not here yet because the building isn't built okay. yet but he'll be here well before opening to uh, do the build out, the operations, and then to run it full time. 
-hmm. and he will be the full-time manager on site uh, 40 plus hours a week in charge of everything. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board. As you heard from the applicant's representation, our office conducted a butters meeting. No concerns were raised by a butters. They also went on to the Austin Civic Association presented to them, presented to them as well. Um, there were just some questions regarding if there would be access to parking in the building, which they were able to provide those answers to. Um, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Calling item 21, High Street LL LLC, located at 200 High Street, holder of a common victor seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Parm Copley LLC, doing business as Parm, located at 100 Huntington Ave, Suite K006A. Premise consists of in one large room on ground floor within dining areas and a bar seating for 67, together with kitchen, storage, and office space, restrooms and rear, seasonal April to October outdoor patio on private property with 56 seats and 11 p.m. patio closing hour. Closing hour 2 a.m., Angela Cortese, manager. And lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Copley Place Associates, LLC. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Attorney Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Attorney Ryan Gosd on behalf of the licensee, Parm Copley, LLC. With us on the call as well is Angela Cortese, who is the proposed manager of record. Um, this is an application seeking to transfer an all-alcohol license to the proposed new restaurant, Parm, at 100 Huntington Ave in Copley Place. As the board might recall back in, I believe it was April of this year, um, the board previously approved what I would call an identical application for this applicant. Um, unfortunately, the license that was originally under agreement ended up being tied up in litigation, so this represents a second coming with a different license that's been placed under agreement. There are no changes from that application in terms of what's proposed for the operation of the restaurant. Um, it will be a full service restaurant consisting of, it is, I don't have square feet in front of me, um, but it will have 67 seats indoors and 56 seats outdoors. Um, it will have a 2 a.m. closing hour. Um, as mentioned, Angela's proposed manager of record, who was the proposed manager of record under the original application that was approved. She is a U.S. citizen, a Massachusetts resident, has experience in the food and beverage industry. Um, lastly, there is a pledge asked with this transfer, which is to be in connection with security for a note that's financing the purchase itself. Um, we did discuss the application with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay before we came before the board on the first application, and we received no opposition. Um, so with that, we would ask that you approve the application and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Attorney Gaza, and thank you for joining us, Ms. Cortese. I have no questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? No questions from me, thank you. And I don't need it, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time, the Mayor's Office will defer judgment to the board. As you heard from the action, they met with the local neighborhood. So uh, previously, we're unaware of any concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 22, TDC Heritage Holdings LLC, located at 91 Park Plaza, holder of a common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to LSF Park Square LLC, doing business as legal seafoods at the same location. Ralph Constantine, manager, closing hour 2 a.m. And secondly, has petitioned to pledge the license to Northern Bank and Trust. Attorney Trish Farnsworth. Attorney Farnsworth. Good morning again, Attorney Trish Fonsworth with Lawson and Whitesim. Uh, with me is uh, Charlie Wright, who's Director of Operations for Legal Seafoods, Donna Cruz, who's the in-house paralegal and um, handles licensing, and also the proposed manager, Ralph Constantine. So this is an application for transfer of ownership. This license is currently located there. It has been for many years. It was originally via MADA years ago. 
then Doretta Tavern, and most recently the Oyster Club, which um, you know did not survive with COVID and such. So the landlord is transferring the license uh, to LSF Park Square, uh, DBA Legal Seafoods. Um, Legal Seafoods actually did have a restaurant right around the corner on Stewart Street that has since closed. Um, but you know they're very excited about returning to this uh, neighborhood. We did meet with Neighborhood Association of Back Bay uh, on June 2nd. They are not opposed. Uh, we did have the butter meeting just this past Friday evening and uh, there were no issues there. Um, the manager, uh, Mr. Constantine is um, TIP certified, serve safe certified. He is working in the Braintree location right now, um, but he's experienced. He's over 20 years owned and operated his own restaurant, uh, I believe in Braintree, but he can answer any questions you may have with that. And uh, Mr. Wright or Donna can answer any questions you may have about operations. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. Um, my only question is Mr. Um, Constantine, could you just describe for the board what your experience is? Yeah, prior to joining Legal Seafoods in December of last year, I owned and operated a small group of restaurants on the South Shore for the past 20 plus years. Uh, over six restaurants since 1998, with locations in Braintree, Whitman, Situate, Plymouth, Marshfield, Cohasset. Um, what were those restaurants? I could look it up in your application, but... It was called Jamie's Restaurants. Jamie's, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? I do not, thank you. No questions for me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, item number 23 uh, will be continued at the request of the applicant to finish the community process. It will be heard at the next transactional hearing before the board on Wednesday, September 14th. Uh, again, item number 23 will be continued to the September 14th transactional hearing. Calling item number 24, Fresh Food Generation LLC, doing business as Fresh Food Generation located at 185 Talbot Ave in Dorchester has applied for a BYOB license to be exercised on the above ground floor retail space with seating for eight. There's also a seasonal patio March to October on private park property with 30 seats, operate the same hours as the retail store. Manager Cassandra Campbell, closing time at 8 p.m. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Uh, good morning, I am representing myself today. Um, we were approved for a wine and beer license um, back in November. This was after having extensive community meetings, um, one with the mayor's office, but also individually with three neighborhood groups, including West of Washington, um, Codman Square Neighborhood Coalition, and the, um, not, not to mess this up, Talbot Norfolk Triangle, TNT. Um, and all three neighborhood groups were really excited to have a restaurant in the neighborhood that would be able to provide wine and beer. Unfortunately, at the time, um, there were no wine and beer licenses available. So the city recommended that we apply for a um, BOYB license, strictly wine and beer. Um, we went through the process of securing the um, proper insurance and also going down to our B3 office and having um, the police department sign off on it. Um, we also reached back out to the neighborhood groups. Um, West of Washington Neighborhood Coalition provided a letter of support um, for us to have a BYOB license. Um, and I just want to say that we've um, been a part of the community for the last eight years. We've been in business since 2015, even though the restaurant opened in September. Um, so we service the community through our catering and through our food truck. 
Um, since being open in November, um, we have been very involved in community affairs, um, including catering different neighborhood group meetings and also hosting the different neighborhood groups at our restaurant. Um, this is very much a family friendly environment. So there are lots of kids who come in and out of our restaurant on a daily basis. Um, lots of elderly folks who live ni nearby who really depend on us to get a quick, healthy meal. Um, this year, we participated in um, a program with the USDA and YMCA that made it possible for kids to come and get free lunches um, in lieu of the school department being closed. Um, and this wine and beer BYOB is really intended to be an asset to the community somewhere where they can go that's within walking distance to celebrate a birthday party. Um, this is a neighborhood of Dorchester that really doesn't have this type of space. Um, and even though we are bordering Mattapan, which does have available liquor licenses, um, it's currently not available to us. Um, and I would just say that the building prior to being built two years ago or a year ago was vacant for the last 10, 15 years. And I'd like to believe that the neighborhood is much safer with the presence of our establishment and bringing people in. Okay. Um, I'm glad you applied for the BYOB, especially in this climate. Um, so inside your restaurant, there are eight seats? Yes, yeah, so there are um, four table, table seats and then four counter seats. Okay. Um, it's a very small area. It's more of a cafe. Okay. I just want to make sure you work with our staff to understand um, the rules and regulations around the BYOB. It has to be 30 and under. Um, so we're just working through some of um, some of the, the regulations there to make sure we can help you understand them. So okay. uh, should this be approved tomorrow, we will follow up with you and um, work through those things with you. Awesome, and if it's helpful to know that we only have um, 20 patio seats outdoor, that's really what's comfortable to people. Okay. Uh, when we submitted, we um, being new restaurant owners didn't understand the math involved. Okay, so you have 20 seats outside and eight inside. Yes. Okay. And so if you were I, to visit the restaurant right now, there it's seated for 20 because that's what's comfortable. Okay. Um, and we did approve you as the manager of record back in November. So I'm not going to repeat those questions. Uh, Commissioner Curry, I know Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions for the applicant today? I do not. Thank you. No questions from me. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. I'm just going to ask if there is uh, anyone with us today who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. As you heard from the applicant, they've been through an extensive community process with a lot of average. A lot of people in the neighborhood are very excited um, for this to come to fruition. Um, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. And Ms. Campbell, we will reach out just to work through the rules and regs regarding BYOB. Thank you. Calling item number 25, Peabody E-Market Inc. doing business as E-Market, located at Four Park Plaza, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above, on one floor consisting of 1,708 square feet, retail sales area, storage and restroom, one entrance and two exits, Manager Emad Henoui, closing time 11 p.m. Attorney John Ada. Attorney Ada. Thank you, Attorney Green. Again, um, uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, John Ada, Dermot Quilty, and Miller, on behalf of the applicant. Um, this is Four Park Plaza. Uh, it was the former site of a Richdale Food Shops, which closed uh, during the pandemic. Um, the site had been closed for several months, and um, the clients, which are Enos Nashed and Emad Henoui, uh, they are both joining us. Um, Today, their husband and wife, 50-50 owners, uh, they own several other stores in Massachusetts under the E-Market name. 
Um, Ms. Henway, uh, sorry, Mrs. Nashad owns two other stores, one that holds a wine and malt license and another that holds an all alcohol license. Um, one is in Lowell, the other is in Lawrence. Um, but Mr. Henway has experience at both those locations for the approximately past five years or so. He's helped to operate and manage those locations. Um, Mr. Henaway, the proposed manager of record, is a United States citizen and Massachusetts resident, and he is familiar with the rules and regulations of the board, the ABCC, and the laws of Commonwealth as it pertains to sale and service of alcohol. Uh, by way of public need, uh, this space was uh, recently leased in um, March of this year. They got into this, uh, as I stated, it was an empty space prior. It opened up a convenience store. It's about 1,700 square feet. And um, since day one, they have had uh, really a lot of overwhelming support from the local business owners, um, the, the neighborhood condo um, owners, as well as any um, you know tourists and, and people coming into the city at nearby hotels. Um, and they've been asking for the addition of beer and wine. Um, we have submitted a petition, there's over 250 signatures I received a couple more petitions this morning from my client, which I have not forwarded on. Um, but, but all in all, for the most part, uh, there's a lot of people within the building itself at Two Park Plaza that support it. This is mostly uh, office space, but there are many neighboring hotels as well as condo units and uh, apartments that um, would benefit, uh, you know, having this uh, in addition to the regular convenience store items. Um, the store itself is set up, there's security cameras, there is a POS system as well as an ID scanner. Um, the POS system will uh, prompt any uh, age-restricted item that the clerk has to you know, verify the person in front of them, check the ID, put in a valid date of birth uh, before that sale can be processed. Uh, this has worked at their other locations and they do not have any violations um, as it pertains to the sale um, of alcohol. Um, the looking for an 11 p.m. closing hour, uh, seven days a week. Um, and again, it's going to be family operated. Um, they are experienced operators uh, in, in addition to this. Um, and I think they can testify as well as the number one requested item, as I kind of mentioned, is uh, from anyone coming in is either beer or wine. Um, they do have that request almost on a daily basis, sometimes dozens and dozens of times. Um, and in addition to that, I think it's going to be a good addition to the space that was not utilized before. It was a, a vacant space, and they're trying to bring some life back to this uh, section of the neighborhood. Um, so, Enos or Imad, um, can you just briefly speak about um, some of your customers that have come in since you've opened in, in March um, and tell the board, you know, what uh, kind of feedback you've had from them? Yes. Can you hear us okay, Imad? Yes. What? So, I'm, I'm yep. Can you just tell about um, just briefly the customers that you have that come in um, and what what they've asked about for the for the beer and wine? No, every every day around fifty customer ask about beer and wine and tourists and some people come for hotels and the neighborhood. Uh, not uh, beer and wines is area and. Uh, why I tell him uh, I'm a try coming soon, I add beer and wine. Um, uh, but uh, most customer walk in store ask about in uh, beer and wine. Thank you, Iman. Mm. Um, and just briefly to the board, we did meet with the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association in May. Uh, more recently, um, beginning of August, we had a, a butters meeting hosted by Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, and in both instances, we were not met with any um, opposition. Thank you. Uh, Chairwoman Grace, do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, thank you. I actually don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran, Commissioner Saxon, do you? Not this time, thank you. None for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Chu Lan Huang. Oh, uh, Chu, you went on mute. Here we go. Are we good? We're good. Good. Um, good afternoon, Ma Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Chu Lan Huang from Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, I, a butters meeting was held by our, by our office on August 3rd. Um, there was a petition 
um, with over 200 signatures as previously stated um, in support. And um, they, the applicant also has a letter of support from the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhoods, Neighborhood Association. Um, this proposal has not been met with any opposition to my knowledge. Um, at this time, we would like to defer to the, the first judgment to the board. Thank you. Are there gonna have any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, yes, good morning, Danny. Good morning, Chairwoman Joyce, board members. This is Mary Higgins. I represent the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association, and we'd like to go on record in support of this, given um, the public meeting um, with Attorney Ayetta, and um, they had met with the MVP in A in May. Um, there are no issues. They have put in as many security measures as, as possible for this sale uh, for this retail package license. So we do support this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify who have not yet done so? Board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item Thank number you. 26, Ray Family Enterprises, LLC, doing business as Comfort Kitchen, located at 611 Columbia Road in Dorchester, has applied for a common victual or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above in one large room on ground floor with dining area and bar seating for 22, kitchen and restrooms, basement for storage together with seasonal April to October outdoor seating for 20 on private property with a 10 p.m. closing hour, interior closing hour also 10 p.m. Manager at Bipla Kirat Ray, closing time 10 p.m., uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Thank you again, Secretary Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Gazd on behalf of the applicant. With me is Bipla Ray, who is the proposed manager of record and co-owner of the establishment. This is an application seeking the issuance of a new neighborhood license for the proposed new restaurant Comfort Kitchen at 611 Columbia Road in Upham's Corner. Um, this will be a new full service restaurant. Um, it'll be a cafe by day and restaurant by night. They'll consist of about 2,400 square feet of space with 22 seats indoors and an additional 20 seats outdoors on a seasonal patio. Um, the restaurant plans to offer a variety of global comfort foods, drawing on an Asian and African inspiration, and will have a 10 p.m. closing hour. Um, Bipla, who is on the call, he is the proposed manager of record and co-owner, along with two of his other business partners. He is a Massachusetts resident, a U.S. citizen, and is experienced in the food and beverage industry and was the co-owner of the Dudley Cafe in Roxbury. Um, in terms of community outreach, the applicant has discussed this proposal vis-a-vis um, -vis, um, Anona sponsored a Butters meeting that was well attended and has received nothing but support from the neighbors. They've also met and discussed this proposal with the Neighborhood Associations up in Corner in Jonas Hill, and they've likewise indicated their support. Um, in terms of public need for this proposal, we think that this concept is something that's very unique to the city and is not really anything else that's offered by anybody else in the city of Boston. Um, this will be a minority owned business and will offer a community focused experience that will draw on the inspirations from the neighborhood and will also add several new jobs within the neighborhood. Um, the neighborhood itself, Upham's Corner, we believe has an influx of potential new residents with developments going on in the area. And there's currently a lack of full service sit down restaurants in the area, let alone any with all alcohol licenses. So we think that this really fulfills a need that the neighborhood has. And it's something that they're being told by the neighbors, especially during the meetings that they've held that the neighborhood wants and needs. Um, so with that, we ask that you grant the petition. We do ask that if there are no licenses available or if the petition is denied, that a CV only license be issued just so that they're able to start operating with food service only. Um, but we're of course happy to answer questions that you might have. And as I had mentioned, BIPLA is on the call as well. Thank you, Attorney Gazda. Thank you for joining us, uh, BIPLA. Um, what was the name of the restaurant that you ran beforehand? Um, it was a cafe called Dudley Cafe in Nubian oh. Square. Yeah. Okay, all right. And this is the free, what is the name of this building? It's a freestanding building mm -hmm. on the road. It's like known as, was it? Yeah, it's so it, 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 I talked about this yesterday. Sure. Yeah, it, it was known as Comfort Station. Um, it's a historic building. 
it was open until 1977 and it has been vacant since then. Really? Okay. Um, and so should you be granted a license, when would you be ready to open? We are looking at first week of October. Oh, you are? Okay. And your attorney covered all of my other questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Nothing additional, thank you. No questions from me, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, from what I understand, uh, the neighborhood was strongly in support of this proposal as well as neighborhood associations, uh, Jones Hill and Dorchester North. They also secured support from a number of local um, elected officials as well. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are all the items before the board today. Thank you very much. That will conclude this morning's hearing. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.